Miss Loretta Young. Hello. Some weeks ago, I mentioned to you that my living room here was done by a fine decorator, Gladys Belzer, my mother. Well, I have received many letters about that since. And a couple of them said, where did you get those crazy Chinese doors? <laughs> but most of them said, we like your living room, and we'd like very much to meet your mother. Well, uh, when I mentioned this to Mom, she just smiled. You know, like mothers do, and promised nothing. However, I'm going to keep at her, because I'd love to have you meet her. My correspondent's name tonight is Sylvia. It's a pretty name, isn't it? Dear Loretta, she writes, I like my friends, and their opinions have always influenced me. I'm that kind of a girl. But right now, I find myself resenting their inferences that the boy I'm crazy about is not good enough for me, that he wouldn't fit in, as it were. Uh, now, I'll admit he's not very good-looking, but he... Oh, well, you know what I mean, Loretta. The only thing that I'm sure of right now is that I'm awfully confused. Well, Sylvia, I think maybe I do know what you mean. But let's see what you think after I repeat a story that was told to me by an army friend of my husband's. He was out here in California in a rest home a couple of years ago. How's my neighbor doing, Doc? Not very well, I'm afraid. Come on, Doc, tell me. What's wrong with her? You really want to know? It's battle fatigue. Battle fatigue? Well, then why isn't she in an army hospital? Come on, Doc. Because she didn't fight with the army. She just had a private little war of her own. And that beautiful body was, and I'm afraid still is, a battleground. She's in a rough state. She looks pretty good from here. You just stay on your own side of the fence, Rick, my boy. I don't want any strangers upsetting my patients. She's no stranger to me, Doc. I know all about Jane Seaton. Strange to know so much about a person that you've never met. You're right, Doc. She's got a war going on inside her. And in case you haven't guessed it, it's over a man. Mr. Happy Hooten was and is this girl's problem. I'm sure that Hap never wore diapers. He must have been born with those baggy pants. Hey, if you're really here, don't go away. Oh, I think you're just wonderful. I'm Jane. I know, because I think you're wonderful. Oh. I could hear you sing all night. Uh, yes, and you usually do. You see, every night I've spotted you hiding in that dark corner. And each night I think tonight he'll come up and introduce himself. But no. Every other fellow in the place comes around, but not Happy Who. Why? Well, you've always got a crowd of fancy people around, and, well, you know how it is, I... I know, I don't know how it is. Uh, those so-called fancy people that you talk about are all friends of my family, and they're real bores. You know, if you were a gentleman, you'd rescue me from that kind of company. Oh, I will, Miss Seaton, next time. Oh, then you must be waiting for Sid. Well, I'll tell him you're here. Uh, no, I don't know any Sid. Well, who did you come to see? <laughs> Why, you clown. I came to see Happy Hooten. Me? Yes. You came just to see me? <laughs> yes, and I loved every minute of this ridiculous act of yours. <laughs> you know, you really are a crazy man. I'd heard that, and then I asked somebody what about you. What do you mean? They... You ask people about me? Yes. But why? Well, because I, I wanted to know more about that silent guy in the corner. Still do. Do you mind? Do I mind? <laughs> no. <laughs> Mr. Hooten. Well, are you doing anything tonight? Oh, no, are you? I, I mean, are you suggesting that... No, uh... no, I've given up suggesting, and now I'm asking. How would you like to buy me a drink? Hey, wait a minute, lady, look. This happens to be my own face. And this nose, it's my own, too, you know. And this hair. 
Well, look at all the money I save on fry wigs. <laughs> Why don't you go and change, and then I'll wait right here for you, all right? Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> For the next few weeks, they were never more than a few hours apart. Jane was either at the theater or half was at the club. Pat, I've got a really good booking in Chicago. Chicago? Oh, now, don't look like that. It won't be forever, and I'll spend every minute and every nickel on the telephone. And, and, oh, you don't know what it's going to mean to me. To prove to my folks that I'm not going to be stuck singing in this cellar all my life. They don't like this place, huh? Like it? Huh. The night I opened here, Mother and Dad flew in from California. They flew right back the same night. Your folks have lots of dough? <laughs> That's right, partner. They're loaded. And they don't take too kindly to your singing? You know something you're a regular Swami tonight? <laughs> you had to trade those baggy pants for a crystal ball. Swami Hooten, that's what I'm going to call you. Yeah. No, Hank. They've been leading my life too long for me already. Now it's my turn, see? Well, do they try to stop you? So far, they've just ignored it. Hoping that you'll get tired of it and find yourself a handsome Prince Charming and move into his palace. Yeah, something like that. Hat, you're gonna miss me when I'm in Chicago. Well, I miss you. Is my hair black? Is your mouth the most beautiful thing on this earth? Mm -hmm. Are we the most ridiculous pair sitting here face to face? <laughs> yes, I'll miss you. I know something. What? What's the matter, Swami? Your crystal ball all clouded up. Can't you read my mind? I'm afraid I'm just a comic. I love you. Oh, Janie. You said you were a comic. Why don't you say something funny? I love you, Janie. Oh, Hap. I'll be right back. I've got to see a man about a flood. But... About your friend. What? Put a sack over his head when he comes in. It don't look so good to have you two sitting in the corner all alone. Makes people wonder what's with Beauty and the Beast. Remember that, will you? Oh, it's my big brute of a boyfriend. Crazy. That's good. Because I've decided to give in. Hey, lady, you shouldn't be so forward. My mother's the head operator, and she'll cut you off if you talk that way to me. What number are you calling? Oh, one moment. I'll connect you with the head supervisor. I know. This is Supervisor Hewton. So you're the brazen young lady who's been annoying my son. But, Mrs. Hewton, my intentions are honorable. I only called to ask him to marry me. If you were picking a guy for this girl and it couldn't be you, why, you'd pick a Tyrone Power or a Robert Taylor. But for the first time in her life, Jane did her own picking. You know, underneath all that garbage, the cake is chocolate. Oh, half I love you. Who in this whole insane world would be sane enough to order a chocolate wedding cake? Well, the only reason people sleep on it is because they can't eat that vanilla stuff. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. To Mr. and Mrs. Happy Hooten. <laughs> I'll get it. Hello? California calling. Yes, put her on. Hello, Mother. Yes. Yes, I'm down here for a couple of days' engagement, and then I'm going back to New York, and... What? Oh, Mother, you're kidding. I, well, I couldn't possibly. Yes, but I just don't understand why you didn't tell me something about it so I could have made my plans. And, well, of course I appreciate it, Mother, but I just couldn't. I... All right. All right, I'll try. Yes, I'll call you back tomorrow. Bye. My father's arranged a screen test for me. I'm supposed to be in California by Friday. You haven't told them you're married. You didn't send the wire. Yep, I just couldn't. I was going to call them. And, well, it's going to be difficult enough for them to understand. And, oh, I don't know. Wire seems so cold somehow. 
I, I thought maybe I could handle it best by the phone, you know. Well, here's to the giant screen. Oh, don't joke, please. But I'm not joking. That's where you belong. Right up there on the screen where millions of people can see you. But this is supposed to be our honeymoon. Well, what's wrong with a honeymoon in California? I'd better still, you go out there alone, make your test, tell your folks about the fool you married, and prepare the geniuses in general in Hollywood for the arrival of the one and only Happy Hooten. I do love you so, Happy. And I love you, Janie. And I'm so lucky to have you. You're lucky. Yes. Did you see the look on the hotel clerk's face when he saw me walk in with you? Why, he must have thought I was the richest man in the world, or else you lost a bet. Couldn't it just be that we loved each other? Not a chance. Folks don't figure that way. Jane had been in Hollywood a little over two weeks. Hap just couldn't stand it any longer, so he canceled his Eastern bookings Borrowed a few hundred bucks and headed west. He didn't tell Jane he was coming. It was to be a surprise. It was a surprise, all right. Uh, hello. Would you please get me Miss Jane Seaton at the Empire Studios? Yeah. I tell her her uh, Swami is calling. Uh, print the first long shot only. We'll get the close-up now, and then Miss Seaton will change her other dress. Let me know when you're ready, Philip. Excuse me, Mr. Granger. There's a call from Miss Seaton. Uh, the operator has a party on the line for you that she can't seem to get rid of. Well, who is it? The operator's laughing so hard she can't quite get it out. I think she said salami. Swami! Yes, I'll take it. Where's the phone? Right away. Oh, thank you. Where are you? Oh, well, why didn't you tell me? Oh, no. No, Hap, don't come to the studio. I'm almost through for the day, and then I'll, I'll meet you at the hotel. Well, no, it's just that I don't want to see you with a lot of people around. Yes, of course I do. Yeah. Goodbye, Hap. Bad news? Oh, no. Well, are you all right? Yeah, sure. I guess it was just about this moment when Jane's conscience opened fire and the war within her was declared. How would Hap fit into this new world she hoped so desperately would be her world? What was it the boss said back in that joint? Put his sack over his head when he comes in. It don't look so good to have you two sitting in the corner all alone. Makes people wonder what's with Beauty and the Beast. Jane was ashamed of Hap. She wished he hadn't come. She was ashamed of the sweetest guy she'd ever met. Ashamed of the man she was in love with. Devil, you. You got yourself a new suit, huh? Like it? Oh, I think it's just beautiful. But isn't the horse going to be a little cold without it? Huh? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, funny girl. Here, let me take your wrap. Well, how's it going? Do they think you're great or they're all crazy? Oh, it's going just fine, Hap. Uh, we should see the test tomorrow and. Oh. Not another chocolate wedding cake. Help, you're just wonderful. You're glad I came out. You know I am. Hey, hey look, if I don't tell any mother-in-law jokes, can I meet your family one of these days? Of course. Oh, you haven't told me you're married, have you? No. Well, what they don't know won't hurt them or us. 
Champagne. California. My favorite, huh? I sure hope they have the room service well oiled, because I fear you're going to stay here at least a week. Oh, Hap, I can't stay here. No. Well, what would I tell my folks? Just tell them that you're married. It seems a logical thing at this point. Yeah, all right. I'll tell them. Hap, I'll tell them tomorrow. Hap, kiss me. test was a success, and the studio immediately placed her in one of their elaborate musicals. That week passed, and the next, and Jane still hadn't taken half to see her family. But every day, Hap was convinced that every day was going to be the day. Jane always called him when she was held up at the studio or had to go right home because of an early call the next morning. Phoned, but Hap never really knew what she expected him to do. She should have known he wasn't the kind who could wait and hide in a hotel room. But he did wait. Two of the newest members of the film colony, Jane Seaton and Jack Granger. Mr. Granger is Miss Seaton's director. Lately, he's been watching her moves on and off the set. Uh, Jane, will you try it once more? Yes. Uh, but, Michael, you know I can't be in Monte Carlo by the 25th. That's uh, very good, but uh, try it with a little more voice. Yes. Oh, uh, Miss Seaton. Yes. Uh, Sorry to barge in this way, Jane. Oh, you're not barging in. We're just about to shoot my number. Come on over. I want you to meet Jack Granger. I'd like to, but I've a train to catch train? Yep, I'm going on the road again. On the road? Or where? Oh, I don't know exactly where. What have? When did all this happen? Just this morning. Oh, I see. Well, look, I'll be finished here in a week or two, and then I'll join you just as soon as I can. And... I'm afraid you won't be able to join me on this tour, Janie. No? No, you see, I re-enlisted in the Army. I'm sure the boys in Korea would like me to bring you along, but there's a war to fight, and you'd make everybody forget it. Oh, have you didn't. But why? Why? I don't know exactly why, but I'm not sure of anything anymore. I think this is the best way. We're ready for you, Miss Satan. Yes, I'm coming. Bye, Janie. But, Happy, you just can't. Please, please don't, Happy. Make all your pictures in Technicolor, honey. I couldn't stand to see you in just black and white. Please, Hap, don't. Oh, come on, don't do that. It's catching. And I can't join the army with big red eyes. But, Hap, you just, you just can't walk out. So long, Jenny. Be a big star. I know that's what you want. Hap. Jane didn't become a big star, or a little star. Her first picture was her last. Because when Hap walked out that door, he took all that was worthwhile of Jane Seaton with him. Korea, this is where I come in. Hap and I were both old retreads, so we just kind of fell in together. Hap was, for me and all the other guys in the outfit, the most pleasant incident in a dreary, horrible war. He had a way of making us all see things through his wonderful comic eyes. Whenever Hap wasn't laughing it up, he was talking about Jane. 
After two years, I learned a lot of jokes and everything about Jane Seaton. I haven't heard from Hap for well over a year. And the last news wasn't so good. He and Jane were divorced, and Happy Hooten was playing any dates he could pick up. She must still be in love with Hap, or she wouldn't be here. When Hap used to talk about Jane Seaton, she was just a character in a story that I hated because of what she'd done to him. But now that she was real to me, and I'd seen what she'd done to herself, I felt sorry for her. In the beginning, her attraction toward Hap must have been more of a rebellion against her background. A rebellion that turned into a love affair and then to this when she rejected Hap because he didn't fit into the very background she had tried to escape from by choosing him. How crazy can you get? Folks, if you pass up crazy Maxie's offer for your old car, then you're really nuts. It was Hap on a local station doing spot announcements. Should I call him and tell him Jane was here or tell Jane? you folks how crazy can you get certainly no idea than crazy maxi why he's so nuts he's giving his stock away of used cars right this very minute so come on down to fifth and forest and meet the craziest man in town operator will you try to get me the local radio station please anybody home Please, Hap, don't leave me. Don't, please don't. I won't. Uh, I won't. Uh, Case history closed. You know, Sylvia, true love is a rare thing. And if you feel in your heart that you've come near it, don't toss it away to please your friends or your pride as Jane Seaton almost did. Shakespeare summed that up rather nicely. Let me not, to the marriage of true minds, admit impediments. For love is not love which alters when it alteration finds. Good night. I'll see you next week. Visit Loretta Young again next week, same time, same station. Thank you.